I want to emphasize a little bit of the practical approach, which I was asked to do. I'm going to show you a basic EMR technique. And here you can see the first thing, of course, we have a cap. And the first thing is to inspect because as has been emphasized so many times, we have to look for any evidence of deep submucosal invasion. Here we have a granular polyp, lateral spreading, occupying you know, two thirds of the circumference. So we inject saline. And the point is that there's really never too much saline. Five, six, seven, 10 centimeters doesn't really matter. I do want to, let me just pause this for one second because this is an important part of the technique that um, many people do not use, which I think helps. I open my snare inside the scope so that when I advance the snare, I'm not advancing a catheter and telling the assistant open the snare. I completely control how much of the open snare is coming out of the tip of the scope. Because as you saw that in, in a previous video, if you have a, uh, open the snare when it's outside the scope, the snare can then push away the tissue more than you want it to. So I always have a, a snare opened up inside the scope. And then it's very important, you want that clear margin. So when we uh, inject our solution with the methylene blue, you'll see that the snare tip is carefully placed be on the, the margin as much as we can. This could be even a little bit more than that. So we'll go through here. And in large polyps, they're often challenging. You say to yourself, God, where do I begin? The fellows always say, where do you start? I start where I can see a clear edge and know that I can get a clear margin. It's very difficult sometimes to get that clear margin. You can see some residual tissue uh, on the margin that we saw a moment ago, but I'm gonna go away and sequentially always take part of the snare uh, either on the normal mucosa or the cut section because I want to get a continuity of resection in very large polyps. So this is like a 20 millimeter snare and you can see the polyp is probably eight or 10 centimeters, but you just treat each little part of, the, of that huge polyp like a small polyp. And now we, we've kind of resected this down to a very uh, a uh, small area, but very difficult to, to raise up and to lift. And so in this case, I'll show this again, we're gonna use a, a different type of snare. Uh, this is called a histolock, it's from Steris. I have no commercial uh, advantage or, or, or no relationship with this, but I think it does add an advantage, I'll show you in a moment, to get those non-adherent parts. Now, I'm gonna show you something else here and I'll show you on the next slide. And I know John Anderson and I have had a private conversation about whether this is safe. This is the, what I call the hot avulsion technique. Hot avulsion is using a hot biopsy forcep uh, and then short pulses of high energy cutting current, very, very short pulses and combined with mechanical traction. You've gotta be pulling away from the tissue. This hot biopsy forcep was discarded 20 years ago when it came out for diminutive polyps because of the large cup of the forceps disseminating energy through the wall of the colon and causing delayed perforation or transmural burns. So it's critical when we do this that we pull away, tent away very, very short pulses of cutting current. And this way we can clean off little bits of residual edge that we don't get. So it's just an important adjunct when you're trying to remove non snareable uh, non-lifting uh, elements of the uh, remaining polyp. So that's kind of your basic technique here. You can see again, hot snare, um, hot avulsion, if you like. And then the other thing we do, we use near focus. We go around the periphery of our lesion and we look, and in the center, we look very carefully for, with near focus to identify any residual bits of adenomatous tissue or a serrated lesion. And then you can use snare tip soft coag. I don't use it in every case, and we can talk about that later in the discussion. 